Hey everybody, this is Mark from the Spark Starter YouTube channel. I just want to share with you another five numbers to know. So these are some interesting numbers about solar PV energy. And PV stands for photovoltaic. So we could have talked about solar thermal or passive solar energy, but this is going to be a talk about solar photovoltaic energy. And uh, these are some interesting numbers to, to remember. The first interesting number is 1,000 watts per square meter of full sunlight. So if you're out on a sunny day and uh, sun shining, for every square meter of area that the sun's hitting, there's a, there's, it contains approximately 1,000 watts of power inside that area. So to compare that to some other things that you might be more familiar with, you know, 1,000 watts per square meter, that's approximately equal to a one horsepower engine. So this is an illustration of a, a one horsepower, uh, like a weed whacker engine. And one horsepower is 746 watts, but we're just going to round up uh, a little bit. So, so it's roughly equivalent to that 1,000 watts uh, of sunlight per square meter. Another thing that you might be familiar with, it's uh, equivalent to a thousand watts is a hair dryer. So when a hair dryer is plugged in and operating, it, it consumes 1000 watts of power. And that's again, equivalent to something like one square meter of sunlight. All right. The next slide I'd like to talk about is hours of operation for our solar panel. So this is five hours of full operation per day. So, so what does that mean? We know that the sunlight on a sunny day is going to give us a thousand watts per square meter of, but that's in peak sunlight. So we get a little bit of sunlight in the morning and a little bit in the evening, but that, that uh, light isn't as intense as it would be at midday. So what we like to consider when we're planning um, you know, solar arrays is that you're going to get approximately five hours of full operation per day, or that's sometimes called a capacity factor. So five hours per, of uh, full operation per day over the 24 hours in a day, solar array will have approximately a 20% capacity factor. And that, that's the amount of hours of the day it's, it's producing its um, peak power. So if we look at this, uh, this uh, two illustrations here, we've got one that's a nice time-lapse photo of the sun as it passes through the sky uh, in a given day. And the other is the power output from a solar array. So you can see, although in the very early morning we're making a little bit of electricity, we really don't get up to our peak power output till we hit you know, 11.30 or, uh, or you know, somewhere between 10.30 and 11 o'clock. And the, uh, the power output of the solar array sustains itself for approximately three hours. And then towards the evening it starts to, uh, the sun, sun begins to set and you have another four and a half hours till sunset. But if you added up all the power in this, this later part of the curve, you get about one hour of peak uh, sunlight. So this little bit of power that's produced over this, these long evening hours and the long morning hours is almost equal to about one full hour of sun. So this is just sort of a, a general approximation. But you figure you have three peak hours of sunlight in midday, and then you're going to be able to to, to harvest approximately one full hour's worth of energy from um, uh, from the morning sunlight and about another hour of full, full operation from the evening sunlight. So this is again called capacity factor. And if you're estimating how many uh, hours of a day that you're going to have that thousand watts per square meter of sunlight, so this number five, five hours is, is what you should keep in mind. So another thing that's important about solar photovoltaics is what's the conversion efficiency. So I'm going to uh, use a 20% efficiency constraint when we're estimating the, uh, the efficiency of our solar system. So I have here a few graphics to share with you. Uh, I got two of these graphics at solar central dot, uh, solarcellcentral.com and I got the, uh, the third from PV Watts. So current solar technology um, is about 14% uh, complete conversion efficiency. And it, you can go in and enter some of your um, system parameters on PV Watts and it'll tell you, um, you know, how many kilowatt uh, hours of, of electricity you'll be able to use and um, you can estimate what the uh, the typical uh, conversion efficiency would be. This is about 14 percent. The absolute theoretical limit is closer to 33 percent. 
Now this may not be achievable in, in, in practice. Uh, this again is um, a limit that's just based on the physics of what's going on inside the, the crystal and material of the solar cell. So I'm going to split the difference. I think there's going to be improvements in solar technology over the, the coming years. Um, and um, you know we won't stay perpetually at that 14% conversion efficiency, but I also don't think it's possible for us to, to reach the theoretical limit of 33%. So whenever you're estimating um, you know, how much energy you could save from a, a solar array or how much it, you know, will it be cost effective in the future, I like to use a 20% uh, efficiency constraint just to, because it's a nice round number and it's somewhat typical of what you'd expect. I'll just say a few more words about solar cell efficiency. Here we have a, a graph of uh, the, the solar spectrum. So this uh, on the x-axis is all the wavelengths of light from ultraviolet all the way out here into the far infrared. And what we have on the y-axis is the energy or, or the power in watts per square meter, the irritance of that sunlight. So if we were to take this larger curve here, um, and you can see there's some notches in here. These notches are from the absorption uh, lines of the chemicals in our atmosphere. So the, uh, the atmosphere is what creates some of these notches. But if we were to, to take all the power throughout this curve um, and add it up, we'd get the 1,000 watts per square meter that we talked about in our first slide. However, the solar cell can only capture a small percentage of this um, of this spectrum. This green uh, curve you see here that's a bit smaller than the uh, than the other is the absorption of the solar cell. So what you have is a solar cell that can absorb a little bit of energy out here in the ultraviolet. It can absorb some energy out here in the infrared, but the bulk of the energy it collects is in this visible, visible light spectrum. And when we look over here, is a, a little sort of a flow diagram of the, the power going through the system. We've got a thousand watts per square meter comes into the solar cells. A lot of that is either reflected or absorbed in the form of heat. Electricity comes out from the solar cell and from there we send it into electronics like microinverters and the wiring that will condition the power to, to be used uh, as conventional uh, alternating current electricity. So from that point, you know, we're going to use, lose approximately another 100 watts, say, in the conversion, and then we're going to be left with 200 watts of usable, pa uh, usable power, usable electricity at the output of this, of this uh, flow. All right, so our third slide, and possibly the most important one of the series, is one kilowatt hour of electricity per square meter per day. So, so this is the amount of energy of electrical energy that we're going to expect to produce for every square meter of our solar array. And what I like to do is use some of the numbers we talked about previously to arrive at this this number. So our first uh, our first segment of the equation here I'd like to show you is a thousand watts per square meter. And that was our first slide. The second slide we talked about is the uh, capacity factor that five hours per day so for the 24 hours in a day only five of those hours are going to give us the usable amount of sunlight our solar panel is one square meter and the conversion efficiency we talked about is 20 percent so if we multiply through all these these numbers we're going to be left with 1000 watt hours per day so 1,000 watt hours is equal to one kilowatt hour. So, so in this one square meter of solar PV cells, we could expect to produce one kilowatt hour a day. And, and a typical question is, well, okay, well, what can one kilowatt hour of electricity do? So here are a, a few examples of what one kilowatt hour of electrical energy will power. So we could run a small refrigerator for one day. We could... Um, or, or we could uh, power a fan for 15 hours, or we could even operate a plasma screen, a 50-inch plasma screen television for two hours. So this is or. You'd have to choose between which uh, appliance you would want to use because um, you know, there wouldn't be enough energy to run them all for this period of time. So 
these are just some different appliances and and that gives you an idea of what one kilowatt hour of electrical energy will be able to provide so solar has one thirty of the 30th of the energy of a gallon of gas. So that's something important to, to think about when we compare renewables to fossil fuels and uh, try to predict when and how uh, renewables might even replace uh, fossil fuels at one day in the future. So what I have here is a two scale drawing of a, a solar array that is 30 square meters of sunlight. So, uh, and, and uh, 30 square meters of photovoltaic cells, uh, all receiving uh, 1,000 watts per square meter of sunlight. So, we know that each uh, one square meter of solar cells is going to give us one kilowatt hour of energy each day. So, if we have 30 uh, one square meter solar photovoltaic modules, we're going to get 30 kilowatt hours of energy every day. So, now that is an equivalent amount of electrical energy, 30 kilowatt hours per day, is equivalent to one gallon of gas. So one gallon of gasoline has 30 kilowatt hours stored in its chemical bonds inside there. So, in comparison, if you uh, had a solar array of uh, 30 square meters, and somehow you could take that electrical energy and convert it directly into fuel, you this array would produce one gallon of gasoline per day. So gasoline is, a, is quite a, an interesting energy source and you can see how compact it is, you know, and how, how much energy there is stored in that gallon of gas and how much solar you would need to replace it. In conclusion, here's some five interesting numbers about the uh, solar photovoltaic energy. You have to keep in mind that there's a thousand watts per square meter of sunlight on a clear day. Uh, of course, it can be a little less on a cloudy day and a little more on a very clear day. Now, you're going to be able to operate your solar array at, at peak power for five hours out of the day. And again, this varies on location, but that's five hours is a nice number to keep in mind when you're doing mental calculations. There's a 20% conversion efficiency of sunlight to electricity. And again, 20% is just a, a number that is uh, representative and it's an even number that'll uh, help you in doing a quick mental calculation. One kilowatt hour of electrical energy per square meter per day. That's the harvest. That's the amount of energy you can harvest from one square meter of solar photovoltaics. One thirtieth is the uh, the equivalent amount of energy com when compared to gas. So one thirtieth amount of usable energy per square meter of solar photovoltaics when compared to gasoline. So I hope you found it interesting, and uh, hope to do some more five numbers to know in the future. So thanks.